Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And there's lots of discussion about the STB1 changes that will be coming in the next patch of World of Tanks. Currently, the STB1 changes have survived the second iteration of the test server, with no changes to how Wargaming envision changing the role of the STB1 as being this kind of like old purpose vehicle that's meant to be good at, well, fairly good at all ranges, to now trying to focus it to be a close quarters combat tank. So I've got the statistics of the STB1 here on the 1.5.1 test server and on the right hand side the stb1 from the current patch of the game 1.5 i.e the one that's in the, your garage right now so we can take a look to see how the vehicle is going to be either buffed or nerfed next patch and i'll leave it up to you to decide and i'll try and give you my all-round conclusion all right so immediately we notice damage per minute of this vehicle is going up and substantially by by a hundred damage per minute this is going to put this tank on par with things like the Object 140, and even going to start to compete with things like the AMX 30B, which is renowned for having the highest, if, if not one of the highest, damage per minutes of any of the tier 10 medium tanks. Now, funnily enough, the alpha damage of this vehicle is being reduced while the caliber of the gun stays the same to 360. Now, this means that the rate of fire of the vehicle goes up to 8.45, which is absolutely phenomenal for taking out the tracks of your opponents and keeping them tracked. What a lot of people will know is that vehicles like the Object 140 with 320 alpha damage, while they have a phenomenal rate of fire of over 9 rounds a minute, sometimes their alpha damage isn't quite enough to be able to take the tracks off your opponents and sometimes keep them tracked if they do a full repair. However, the alpha damage of 360 on the STB-1 combined with that awesome rate of fire should make it fantastic for locking down heavy tanks and locking down tank destroyers, or even if you just catch a light tank or a medium tank out of position and keeping them there while surrounding them. Now, unfortunately, the shell velocity of this vehicle is going to drop significantly from 1,478 down to 1,185. This is really awkward because trying to snipe at things that are moving or alternatively engaging tanks at long distances, you just can't be quite as accurate or, well, I guess your accuracy stays the same. But it's more about that if they adjust the, the direction of their travel, if they're wiggling, then it's much, much harder because you have to give more lead with a lower shell velocity. The premium rounds on this vehicle will stay as heat and nah, I don't think there's really any change. Actually, no, there is. Whoa, the shell velocity of the heat rounds of this vehicle are dropping significantly by over 200 meters a second. So don't think you're going to be able to sit at long range and spam at your opponents with either the regular AP rounds or the heat rounds on this vehicle and not have to give significant amounts of lead. All right, so now onto the gun handling. This was one of the worst things about the STB-1. It was a tier 10 medium tank with that kind of tier 9 horrible gun handling and it's one of the best things about going from the type 61 well no sorry it's one of the usually the best things of going from a tier 9 to a tier 10 medium tank is that you pretty much keep the same gun in most cases but the gun's gun handling just gets that much better now the new stb1 has way better aim time and massively better dispersion when moving look at this 0 0.09 these are all hidden statistics that you wouldn't see in the garage unless you delve into a website like tanks gg or i guess watch my tank reviews right so this is a huge buff, so the STB-1 can be more accurate while firing on the move. Its turret traverse dispersion is still awful, but at least to shave off 0.3 seconds of its aim time is really going to help. Now its accuracy gets a little worse, and a lot of you might be looking at the elevation and the depression of this tank and thinking, oh god, are they really doing that to the vehicle? Are they really making this like a Soviet medium tank with regards to its gun depression? No, that's because they're giving it a full hydropneumatic suspension, a lot like the tier 10 Swedish medium tank, which will actually allow this vehicle to depress to about 12 degrees of gun depression. Although, only over the front of the vehicle, right? Because while this tank does have decent gun depression over the side, remember that when you're using the hydropneumatic suspension to add six extra degrees, that if you're aiming over the side of the vehicle, it doesn't quite work out in the same way. So that's going to make the positioning of the STB-1 on the ridgeline, all the more important to try and keep it facing towards your opponents if you need to use that extra gun depression. So now on to mobility. Well, the top speed limit of this vehicle is being reduced from 53 to 50, which isn't really that noticeable, but it also is. But one thing that is noticeable is the reverse speed. 25 kilometers an hour. That's crazy. This thing's able to now go faster and some heavy tanks like the mouse can go forwards. Um, and that's with the vehicle in reverse, going backwards. This is great for when you want to go over a ridge line, pull a chancy shot, and then pull back. Or alternatively, if you've just been a little bit too cheeky and gone too far over the ridge line, you can get back safer. And it's one of the, the best things about the STB1 change for, for me personally. All right, so another thing that's great about the mobility is the power to weight is increasing by 25%. That's because it's just getting a 200 horsepower boost in the engine. This will allow the thing to accelerate up slopes. 
even up to its top speed limit of 50 km an hour, and will allow it to pull back much faster with that lovely reverse speed. Including, in addition to this, the traverse speed of the vehicle with regards to the turret is being improved to 46 degrees and the tank traverse is being improved to 55 degrees, so more mobile than ever. And also, turret arm. Frontally, this thing's now going to have 222 millimeters of frontal armor and it's also got 2,000 hit points. However, the view range does fall from 410 down to 400. And so while previously... I would probably use vents instead of coated optics on this tank if you have an exceptionally skilled crew and you're willing to use a premium consumable. I really think that you should drop the vents and use coated optics next patch, even if you have a good crew. Unless you're willing to use bond vents, I guess, and the STB-1 is for some reason your favourite tank in the game. Anyway, now that you know how they're changing the statistics, let me show you how the vehicle plays out. I always... I hate it! They're always these Japanese girls, I just can never tell when they're going to stop talking. It reminds me of when I was uh, reviewing the Nameless tank from the Asia server with the Valkyria Chronicles crew and they just wouldn't shut up anyway. And I, I don't know why they had to change the Japanese uh, voice acting for the male and female crews as well. I, I thought the last ones were pretty good. Anyway, I digress. Let's focus on the tank at hand, the SDB-1. We're definitely slower getting into position here. Remember, the top speed limit of the vehicle has been reduced to 50 kilometers an hour. And while it's not a huge drop down from the 53 that it was previously, yeah, it's, it's still worth mentioning. However, remember, our power to weight ratio has improved by about 25%. So going up this slope, even if you want to be a lumberjack like me and chop down some trees, yeah, we're much faster. Look at this, 25, 30 up slope, and I'm slowing down here. And there you can see the hydropneumatic suspension of the vehicle. But when you're aiming over the side of the tank, it's not actually very good. And that's something that a lot of STB-1 drivers are going to probably not like about the vehicle. And that is that I, I feel that the tank has less gun depression over the side than it previously did. So you've got to make sure you're facing your opponents. Because I'll show you how the, the hydropneumatic suspension works here. Do you see how it's tilting the back of the vehicle up? Which actually adds to the 6 degrees of gun depression that the turret has. And so that allows you to use some really funky positions such as this one. And this thing is going to be a bit of a boss of a ridgeline, a lot like a UDES 1516 is. And so, depress, 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 elevate the butt of the tank to be able to get towards the, the Sheridan there. And this thing's pretty funky. I can imagine that a lot of people are going to have a huge amount of fun with this vehicle if you love to try and get in sneaky positions and try and use some ridgelines. Or maybe you just like to do chancy shots here at the STB-1. The vehicle really is very comfortable now to work a ridge. But I also have to admit that the hydropneumatic suspension that the vehicle has yeah, it feels a little bit more clunky than if the vehicle just had 12 degrees of gun depression, for example. It's not like I'm driving a Comet, where I do have 12 degrees of gun depression. And I don't need to worry about it because I know I've got it over the side of the tank and I've got it over the front of the vehicle as well. On the STB-1, on the other hand, you really do have to make sure you're facing towards your opponents to maximize that gun depression. So what we're seeing here is just how bad the shell velocity is. Even at short distances like this, even if just I had like a, a millisecond more, well, if I had 0.10 of a second more, which is probably the difference in dropping down from the 1,500 meters a second this vehicle had to the now sub-1,200 meters a second the vehicle has, it does make it very awkward for trying to snipe at weak points. Although maybe I just wasn't aiming very well there. Now, probably a little bit of both, I'd say. But I tell you what, that's a good shot. Locking down the tracks of the TVP, but unfortunately for me, he uses a repair kit to be able to get out of harm's way. But we're going to put one now into the side of the Amex 30B, and we block a heat round with the top of our tank. And I am just feeling really good about the state of this vehicle right now. Just having that extra gun depression, having that extra turret armor, which makes you feel confident to be able to, to use the gun depression, the increased rate of fire, now, while obviously I like to hit harder than softer, if I can just have a flat-out DPM increase that this vehicle is getting of over 100 extra damage per minute, then it's totally worth it. I don't mind dropping from 390 to 360, and as we're going to see possibly later on in the game, um, I'll be able to show you why also. Um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's not quite good to have higher alpha damage than you need to, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so MX-30B is pushing forward. I'm going to fire one at his Coppola, and he thinks, ah, he's got a terrible rate of fire, right? Well, wrong, mate. We shut him down. Unfortunately, he does manage to penetrate a heat round into us. But a lot of people are just not going to realize just how good the rate of fire is on this vehicle. And so to all intents and purposes, you should really treat this thing as if it's a, a Soviet medium tank. 
if, of course, the statistics stay as they are. And considering the wargaming didn't change them in the second iteration of the, uh, of the patch, then I don't think that, I think that this is pretty much what the STB-1 is going to be like. But look at this. This is what this tank is made for. Such a good rate of fire allows you to lock down the tracks of your opponents and just brutalize them. And unlike 240 alpha damage on your tier 8 medium tanks, Unlike 320 alpha damage on your tier 10 Soviet medium tanks, well at least like 4 out of 5 of them have 320 alpha damage, 360 is just enough to be able to consistently take the tracks off more than sometimes in the Object 140 for example, where you have to shoot the tracks twice. And so, oh my word, this kind of 360 sweet spot means that not only are you going to take the tracks off first shot, you're going to not waste the extra alpha damage that you would have for the 390 that you didn't need to be able to take the tracks off. And in turn, because of the rate of fire of the vehicle, you are going to be able to keep them off. And so that is pretty gnarly. This is going to be one of my favorite vehicles. Next patch, I think, ladies and gents, at tier 10. Purely because this is my kind of gameplay. I love rushing. I love focusing on the relevant target. I love locking down tracks as much as I can. We have a quick look round, and now we're going to make sure that we put one into the back of the 60 TP. And we don't even need to track him right now. We might as well just go straight for the damage because our rate of fire is just that wild. And what do you need? Like, this is 3042 base DPM. Take the tracks off the Type 5 Heavy. Unfortunately, he repairs them. And look at that. Just look at the damage we were able to deal there in that short amount of time. In about a minute of gameplay, we literally did 2,000 damage to our opponents. This thing, when you get a good crew on it, God forbid that you put bond equipment on it and use a premium consumable like I am, this thing is going to be an utter monster next patch. And I can't wait to play it. I'm not sure. Obviously, a lot of you out there who like to play the STB-1 as a bit of a more of a, a long-range vehicle. You might suffer a little bit. You've definitely lost shell velocity off your standard in your premium rounds. The accuracy is just a touch worse. But personally, for me, ladies and gents, the, the things that this vehicle have lost are simply dwarfed by what it has gained. So a casual ace here in six minutes of gameplay with 6,000 damage and five kills as well. And I tried not to fire uh, as many heat rounds as I possibly could to show what this vehicle is going to be like in a, in a real game scenario and not what you could do on a test server just by spamming a huge amount of credits. So the SDB-1, it's, it's definitely not just buffed. There are some aspects of the vehicle which have fallen, but hopefully this video and the rundown and the way that I've condensed all of the different features of the vehicle will make those of you who are feeling maybe a little bit nervous about the state of their SDB-1 next patch something more to look forward to. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released, it's time for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And the most of you have voted for the Rheimatal Panzerwagen this week. And so come and see me play through to the tier 10 German light tank so we can get our scout on. And if you've never been to one of my tech tree showcases before, they're basically like miniature tank reviews all the way up from tier 1 to tier 10. So you can see if it's a line that's worth grinding. Or alternatively, if you already have the vehicles, maybe pick up a few tips and tricks along the way. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon